You know, this is the month of August, correct? Hmm. And, oh dear. I'll tell you what the Lord is guiding us to do and what he's telling us for the month of August. And it's not just, the result will not just be for the month of August, it's going to go into the future. Let's read a few scriptures so you understand what month it is for us. You ready? Okay. First one. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15, Amplified Version. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, Amplified Version. I want you to notice something, okay? He says, Through him, therefore, let us constantly and at all times offer up to God a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of lips that thankfully acknowledge and confess and glorify his name. All right? Did you notice that? Now, I know what you have in the King James translation, but in that last line, it actually breaks for you what's written in the, in the Greek language that's translated to the English. Okay, give it to us in the King James so they can see what I mean. King James. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Now, that phrase, giving thanks, that phrase there is actually... To make confession. It's homologio. Okay? It's the verb. To make confession to his name. That's why in the, in the Amplified Version. Go back to the Amplified. Through him therefore let us constantly and at all, at all times offer up to God a sacrifice of praise. Which is the fruit of lips that thankfully acknowledge. You see, it also means to give thanks. See, thankfully acknowledge and confess and glorify his name. How do you confess his name? How do you acknowledge and confess his name? And it says this is a sacrifice to God. How do you acknowledge and confess his name? See, the name of Jesus has given me life. Glory to God. The name of Jesus has given me life. And I declare... I declare that I have life in the name of Jesus. I declare that I have salvation in the name of Jesus. I declare that I am blessed in the name of Jesus. I declare that in my path there's prosperity in the name of Jesus. You see, I'm acknowledging the name of Jesus and I'm making confessions to his name. Are you hearing this? And it says, this is the fruit of lips. He calls it a sacrifice, a spiritual sacrifice. Go to Hosea chapter 14, and let's look at verse 2 very quickly. Hosea chapter 14 and verse number 2. Take with you words. Can you imagine that? He says, take with you words. Carry words with you. He didn't say take anything else he says words how important is this look at it take with you words and turn to the Lord say honor him take away all iniquity and receive us graciously so will we render the calves of our lips what do you mean calves he's talking about animal sacrifices but this time he says instead of those animal sacrifices it says our lips the words that come out of our lips represent those calves Instead of those animal sacrifices, he says, words. Take with you words. And God's going to accept the calves of our lips. That's the same thing we're talking about in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15. It says the fruit of our lips. Spiritual sacrifices. Are you following this? And I told you what they're like. When you're giving praise, I thank God for my health. In the name of Jesus, I walk in perfect health from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. In the name of Jesus, my heart is perfect. My lungs are perfect. My kidneys are perfect. My skin is perfect. In the name of Jesus Christ. And therefore, I will not accommodate disease. I will not accommodate any infirmity. 
I'm strong in the name of Jesus. Are you know what I'm sharing with you? Okay, now with those verses in your mind, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse number 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse number 3. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. What's it mean? You know about evaporation from all the water sources in the heat causes the water to evaporate and to go into the atmosphere. Okay? And when it is saturated, it condenses and comes down as rain. So, but it came first from the earth here, from other water sources, water bodies, and the water went up. Until it was full and it condensed, came down as rain. What is it saying here? What is telling you about here? It's not about water. No, it's not about water. It's about you speaking words into the realm of the Spirit. Speaking words into the realm of the Spirit. Don't wait till challenges of life come and then you start talking. He says, if you would talk now, you will saturate your spiritual atmosphere. And when the clouds are full, the condensation will take place. And the next thing you know, all those things that you have spoken into the spiritual realm will start falling like rain upon your life. Are you hearing me? Are you following the scriptures I'm sharing with you? Good. Now let's go to another one. Um, 1st John chapter 5 let's read from verse 9 we're gonna read from verse 9 to verse 12 let's go if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater now now that word witness comes from a Greek word materia and what it means is the word is the same thing as record it means testimony it means to testify like you're in the court to testify you get it so what it's saying is if we receive the testimony of men, now this testimony is not I lost I lost my bunch of keys last night and I found it praise God that's not what it's saying he's not talking about oh I had a pain and I've been healed praise God that's not what he's saying he's talking about testifying bearing record of what God has said are you hearing me you're testifying you're bearing witness and your witness your testimony is a record it's the same word now look at it um, in the next verse you're gonna find it we'll get there in a second if we receive the witness of men he says the witness of God is greater for this is the witness of God which he test he had testified of his son next verse he that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believeth not the records that God gave of his Son. Same word, this translated records. It's testimony, witness, record, the same word. Are you hearing me? Okay, so it means the record that God gave of his Son. What is the record that God has given concerning me? He says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away, all things have become new. That is the testimony of God concerning me. He bore testimony of Jesus as his Son and proved him to be his Son with power by the resurrection from the dead. He declared, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You remember there at the uh, river Jordan? God testified that Jesus is his son. Now he testifies that if I am in Christ, I'm a new creation. That's God's testimony. That's God's record. That's God's witness. So in the heavenly court of justice, God has testified concerning us in the mind of God in the mind of divine justice you are a new creation it doesn't matter that you feel so or you don't feel so as far as he's concerned you are the seed of Abraham even if you are broke in the earth 
in the mind of God, in the mind of divine justice, you are as rich as Jesus is because you are a joint heir with him. This is God's testimony. Before all of the angels, God has testified concerning you. And it is written in the Holy Scriptures. The Bible declares as he is, so are we in this world. This is God's testimony. He has testified that we are like his son, Jesus. Jesus also declares that the world may know that the Father has loved us as he loves Jesus. Are you following this? So this is the divine testimony of Almighty God. Okay, go back to that verse. We're in verse 10. It says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a lie because he believeth not the record that God, had, that God gave of his Son. Verse 11. Watch this now. And this is the record. That word is testimony. This is the testimony that God hath given. Watch. It is a testimony. You cannot testify of something that has not happened. Are you hearing me? You can testify of tomorrow. You have no evidence of tomorrow. You can only testify of something that's already taken place. That's the language. He says, this is the testimony. This is the record that God had to give to us. He's already done it. I told you, in the mind of God, it's done. It doesn't matter that you feel it or you don't feel it. Feeling has nothing to do with it. If you have a piece of property somewhere outside, in Lagos, or in Abaddon, or in London, you don't feel like you got it. All you need is your testimony, your record, your witness, your documents. Are you following this? The title deeds. That's all you need. You don't have to feel like you've got it. This is the record that God has given, has given in the mind of God. He's already done it. This is the record. This is the testimony that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Verse 12. Look at it. He that had the son had life. Hallelujah. And he that had not the son of God had not life. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have life. In the mind of God, you're dead. In the mind of God, you're estranged from all the goodness of God. You're estranged from his blessings. Estranged from his presence. Oh boy. But anyone who's got the Son of God has life. He says, this is the record. This is the testimony. Are you hearing this? So, oh boy, yes, testify. I testify that I am. Come on, go ahead. Fill it in. I'm a new creation. I testify. Glory to God. I testify. Good, good. Good. So I testify that I have divine health. I testify that the healing of God's, God's power is at work in me. I testify. I testify that I'm rich and not poor. I testify that I'm not broke, but I'm prosperous. I testify that all things are mine in Christ Jesus. I testify. Are you following this now? Good. Let's take one step further. Revelation chapter 12. Begin from verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Stop. This is the book of Revelation. This is a revelation given to John the Apostle about things that will happen in the end of time, in the latter days. And he's seen the vision 
of the future. So he writes now in the past tense of what he saw. Look at it again. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth. Did you see that? Which deceiveth. He is deceiving. But look at his end. He says, I saw what happened to him. Though he deceives the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Look at verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He keeps laying charges against us, working through his kids, but they will always fail. Look at, look at that. Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. He doesn't stop accusing us. He does it day and night. He can't even rest. Verse 11, and they, who? Our brethren. Listen, 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 listen to this. The angels are talking about us. They're referring to us as our brethren. And so they talk about us and they say, they, that's us. They overcame him, who? The devil, Satan. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. Do you understand that construction? He didn't say they love not their lives unto death. He says they love not their lives unto the death. That means they stake their lives on it. In other words, it didn't matter to them what it was. They were ready even unto death. If it meant death, they were ready. That doesn't mean that they were all killed. That doesn't mean they all died. That means they were ready even unto the death. That means pull your trigger if that's what you want. You get it? So what is he saying? They overcame the devil by the blood of a lamb, which was already shed for us. That's the blood of Jesus. That's already done. And how do we testify of that one? With the communion. When we take the cup, we are proclaiming his death. As we take that cup, we say, his blood was shed for me. That's the blood of the Lamb. You see how important communion is. And then he says, and by the word of their testimony. Now that's the same word, material. It's not talking about when you testify of, oh, what God has already done in your body today. You say, I... I, I my toes were pinning me and now they're healed. That's not what he's saying. He's talking about the record, the testimony, the witness, the document. What's in that document? What's in that Bible? He says, that's how we overcame the devil. John saw it. He saw that we won at the end. And that the way we won was by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. I testify that I am strong and not weak. I testify, I'm full of power, I'm full of glory, in the name of Jesus. You know what, brothers and sisters? This month of August is a month of testimony. Woo, woo. Hallelujah. Every day, testify. Are you hearing me? And one of the beautiful things you can do for yourself every day, write your testimony. Write it. I testify. I am strong. I testify. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I testify. Glory to God. Throughout this month, testify. 
You don't have to say to anybody. It doesn't matter who's listening to you. But you're just going to keep saying it. Keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Soon enough, the clouds will be full of rain. And they will empty themselves upon the earth. Shout amen, somebody. Glory to God. Testify, testify, testify about your job. Testify about your business. Testify, testify everything that concerns you. Testify. The hand of God is on you. Glory to God. Woo!